Hello, so uh, one of my colleagues at work has brought in his uh, uh, Gigabyte um, X370 Gaming K5 here. Um, you can see it is the uh, K5, not a Gaming 5. So this is the one that has the base clock overclocking, slightly worse VRM. He's got a um, team group 3200MHz C14 RAM and a Ryzen 7 1700. And he's been having quite a lot of stability issues with it, getting a stable overclock. Um, he hasn't really updated the BIOS. It's currently on the F10 BIOS and the latest is like 23D. So there's been, what, like 10 revisions since he updated it. However, I'm going to go through and show you the problems with this BIOS um, and how it needs a lot more manual tweaking um, than, say, a board with a decent BIOS. So, <laughs> we're going to go through and uh, I'll show you pretty much how I got it stable step by step. And then we might update his BIOS and hopefully it shows the same issues that I was seeing earlier and I'll explain why those issues are actual issues. So you can see here it's completely stock at the minute, it's got 1,414 well, 1414 in Cinebench which is pretty much slower than a 2600X and a 3930K and this has got 8 cores. But obviously that is um, at like 3.2 GHz or whatever it boosts to in Cinebench so at stock it is pretty slow um, the RAM is at 2133C15 as all boards out of the box which is fine, it runs perfectly stable at stock obviously so um, yeah that, that is, it's not really very exciting, it's just kind of slow so I'm gonna fix it now so let's just get into the BIOS. So the problems he was having specifically um, is it wasn't booting very well from cold, sometimes it boot up, sometimes it wouldn't and then it would also randomly crash he's tried 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 4 gigahertz and it's um, none of it really works too well from there. So Let's have a look here. We're going to try and go to 3.9 gigahertz. So we we don't actually need any base clock, but we're going to move the base clock up a little bit, and we're going to set the CPU clock ratio to 39, and enable XMP, and do absolutely nothing else. Um, we're going to leave. Actually, we'll put um, plus 200 in on the voltage because that's what he had it at. So the normal voltage on here is 1.2 volts as, as far as I've seen from my testing so far. So plus 0.2 volts should give us approximately um, 1.4 volts. And you can see here the SOC voltage is sort of 0 0.9. Well you can't because it's focused. But it's around 0 0.9 at stock with the RAM at 21.33 and the V cores at around just over 1.2 you can see there and that's totally stock so I'm going to reboot missed it so it has actually booted first time, which is um, obvious for the video. Okay, so we'll just we'll just run it as it is now. Now it's not unstable on a Cinebench run, obviously. Uh, you can see there we're at 3.9 gigahertz, and the memory is set to uh, 3200 141431 14, so run that again you can see the voltage is dropping down to sort of 1.38 volts under load 
which is fine. There we go, seven, seventeen thirty-seven. That's already a lot better. However, the board is actually running dangerous SOC voltage, as you'll see in a second, to keep that 3200 MHz RAM stable. So if we go down here to PC health status, you can see there the vCore SOC is over 1.2 volts which is bad because that is um, well basically anything over 1.2 volts can pretty much degrade your integrated memory controller really quickly so that right there um, is quite a big issue for me personally and I've seen it go all the way up to 1.26 sometimes so that is bad and also if we turn it off so we'll try and do a cold boot here and it has actually booted first time because it is putting 1.2 volts through the SOC however Sometimes, when it's not booting, um, I've come in here, it's at 3.9 GHz still, however, uh, the memory is at 21, it's set the memory back to 2133. So you can see again, it's still setting over 1.2 volts on the SOC, which is actually dangerous. So, what you want to do is, you want to go into your advanced um, SOC voltage, and normal is 1.1 volts in this case so we're going to give it um, just a bit over well we'll go with well yeah 0.1 volts and reboot This board doesn't have a postcode reader either, so you can't really tell what it's doing, which isn't very helpful when it's not posting. So you will be able to see now 1.2 volts dead on, 1.18. So it goes up and down a little bit, but it's it's around 1.2. It's definitely a lot safer than it was before. And now that we've set it manually ourselves, there won't be the issue where the auto voltage is thinking, oh, do I boot up at 1 volt or 1.25 volts? It's like there's no in-between whatsoever with this board. It's really weird. Like, it's just booting really random voltages. It's, there's nothing in between. So now you can see 3.9 GHz, 3200 on the memory. So well, 1737 last time, the score should be about the same because we're still running the same memory speed and the same clock speed, there we go, 1741 let's run it again see the voltage is sticking around 1.38 volts still Seventeen forty one. And the other thing about running less SOC voltage is it will keep your temperatures down as well. So it will boot at four gigahertz. 
However, it will not run any benchmarks. It will sort of run a bit of Cinebench and then crash. We'll run Cinebench at uh, 3.95, but you can see it sort of stops at certain points, which is a sign that it's kind of working, but not quite. And this is just a really quick way to test as well, obviously I'm not doing any stress tests on any of this, I'm just doing it by running Cinebench at the moment, so you can see 4 gigahertz or not, there you go. So is it 4 gigahertz? It is going round. There we go, crashed. So the question is, will it blue screen or not? Doesn't look very blue screeny. So I'll just reset it. Hopefully it will go back into the BIOS. There we go, straight back in again. So again, all it is, the main issue with this PC was this voltage here being on auto. Okay, so we're going to do a little experiment here because the uh, F10 board, um, F10 BIOS for this board isn't working and there's an F20, 21, 22 and 23D BIOSes. We're going to go up the BIOSes incrementally and see where the problem with the excessive SOC voltage or if the problem with the excessive SOC voltage on this board has been fixed in a BIOS update. So we are currently on uh, BIOS version F10 which you can see there and we're going to go into the Q flash update BIOS and then we're going to go on to K5 and F20 first so we're going to start with the oldest one first and we're going to update the BIOS one by one from firstly 10 to 20 and see if that fixes the issue I'll come back when it's done And you can also see it's still overvolting the SOC. And yet again, SOC voltage still way too high. still too much SOC voltage and it will not focus on this page to save its life incredible At least it supports Ravenridge now, so you can upgrade your CPU to a 2700X so it can kill that as well. So we're booted into Windows on the F23D BIOS. So we will see what it has in store for us here. 
interesting. Let's see if it clocks up to um, 3.9 once we run Cinebench, because at the moment it's sitting at basically 1400 MHz and it is stuck at 1400 MHz, that is very strange. I'm running 3600 though. <laughs> Longest 8 core si <coughs> Cinebench ever. 629. So I went back through all the BIOSes F23D, F22, F21 and F20 and all of them ran the CPU at 1.4 GHz so we just flashed back to the F10 BIOS and stability tested from there. So to prove the overclock is pretty stable you can see here 3.9 GHz 3200 MHz memory and it's just finishing off the benchmark so the RAM usage is going down as these finish here but it's literally been running at max memory usage 100% load for um, 21 minutes and 39 seconds running 8 4K X265 video renders all at the same time so yeah I, I would say that's pretty stable at this point not bad not bad at all